So you're looking to buy a new power station, but you have a couple questions. Well, in this video, I want to answer two of the most common questions that I get from my viewers. Question number one, how do you calculate device run times? And question number two, how do you choose the right size power station? Now inside of each one of these power stations is a battery and that battery capacity is measured in watt hours. I have three of Blue Eddy's newest power stations here on the table, the AC2A, the AC70, and the AC200L. Now the smallest power station, the AC2A, is rated at 204 watt hours. The medium size here, the AC70, is rated at 768 watt hours, and the largest one, the AC200L, is rated at 2048 watt hours. But what does that even mean? <laughs> See what I did there? Keeping things simple, the term watt hour refers to the measurement of energy over an hour. It basically tells you how much power you can pull from a battery or a power station before it dies. The larger the amount of watt hours, the longer the runtime. This one's rated at 2048 watt hours of capacity, so let's break down some examples of runtimes. The basic equation for calculating runtime is the following. You take the total watt hours of your battery, you divide it by the wattage, the load of your device that's connected up, and that will give you your runtime in hours. So let's run a few examples on the AC200L. We're gonna round the watt hour capacity to 2000 to make it simple. So in a perfect world, if you wanted to run a 200 watt device on this, how long of a runtime would you get? Well, you take the 2000 watt hour of capacity, you divide it by 200, and that will give you 10 hours of runtime. What about a larger load? What if you wanted to run a 1000 watt load? Well, you take the 2000 watt hours, you divide it by 1000 and that gives you a runtime of two hours. Now this is in a perfect scenario without any losses and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But with this equation, you can basically take any battery or power station, divide it by the load and you'll get a runtime in hours. Now in order to calculate runtimes in different scenarios, it's important to know what device pulls how many watts. For example, how many watts does your TV pull or your full size refrigerator or your laptop computer? That's why I recommend you go out and purchase this affordable watt meter. This allows you to track the watts and the watt hours that every single appliance in your home consumes so that you can know how to estimate run times. I have a 250 watt heater plugged in and then this is connected to my wall via an extension cable. So we are seeing 241 watts going out from the device. We are seeing two amps of current, 119 volts from the power company at 60 Hertz. It's been running for 24 minutes and during that 24 minutes we have pulled 90 watt hours. You can see how many watt hours this pulls. You can also see the power factor and then we're back to wattage. So if you want to see the wattage or the watt hours from any device you can pick up something like this to easily estimate that runtime. Now once you pick up a watt meter like this I recommend that you start testing appliances around the house so you can see how many watt hours they use. For example with your full-size refrigerator Put this in line with your refrigerator and then after 24 hours, see how many watt hours it uses. Did you know that your fridge uses more power in the summer versus in the winter when it's cooler? It'd be pretty interesting to see the power difference there. So make sure you record the results. You could test your TV, you could test your home office, you could test your home internet setup. Remember, test the most important things that you'd want to run during a power outage so you can plan ahead for the watt hours that you'd need in your power station. Now what's nice about this unit here is that it has flash memory. So if it loses power or you unplug it, all you have to do is plug it back in and it'll remember the results of the previous test. So you just have to clear it on the screen. So this is affordable. I really like the usefulness of this device. I'll include it down in the video description. I'll link to this if you wanna pick one up. Now, do you guys remember earlier in the video when I mentioned that each one of these power stations has a advertised capacity of watt hours? Well, I mentioned that in a perfect world, you'd actually get that full capacity. Well, we don't live in a perfect world. So when you discharge these, you don't get quite that number. Got to remember that the AC inverter uses background power. The screen will use power. These have microprocessors built into them that also use background power and they have to save a small portion of the battery right as it shuts off so that if you completely take this down to 0%, it doesn't actually fully kill the battery. So what type of power do you expect as you discharge each one of these? I like to call that the usable capacity. So if we charge each one up to 100% and discharge it all the way down until they shut off, how much usable capacity should we expect? Now on the first test, I discharged the AC2A all the way down to 0% and pulled a total of 180 watt hours of usable capacity. I then tested the AC70, discharging it all the way down to 
and I pulled a total of 680 watt hours of usable capacity. And finally, I tested the AC200L, discharging it all the way down to 0%. I pulled a total of 1800 watt hours of usable capacity. Now I've tested a lot of different power stations on the channel and I know what a good result is. Each one of those tests are really good, especially for these smaller power stations. Both of these got 88% of the advertised capacity. The AC200L got 87%. So you can still expect quite a bit of power from these power stations, even after all the losses. Now, so far in the video, we've discussed watts, watt hours. We've discussed how to measure those using an inline watt meter. We've also discussed usable capacity versus advertised capacity. So I wanna put all that together in a real world demo. So let's go ahead and test running my full-size refrigerator using an inline watt meter on the AC200L to see how long of a runtime we get. And also, this is gonna be interesting because this is not a consistent load. The fridge runs and then it shuts off and then it runs. So we're gonna get some interesting results because the inverter is gonna use background power, but the fridge is also gonna use power. So what is gonna use more power, the fridge or the power station inverter? Let's find out. Now starting at 100% state of charge, the fridge ran for 25 hours before the battery hit 0%. Now looking at the watt meter, you can see the fridge pulled 1550 watt hours and it only ran for a total of 523 minutes. Now what's interesting is this watt meter only tracks time as power is flowing through it. So we can see that the fridge ran for about 8.7 hours and sat idle for 16.3 hours. Now breaking down those numbers, we can see the fridge pulled an average of 178 watts, which makes sense because the compressor pulls around 120 watts and then when the defroster turns on, it pulls 400 to 500 watts really briefly and then shuts off. If you remember, we got 1800 watt hours on the usable capacity test and the fridge pulled around 1550 watt hours over a total of 25 hours. So where did that other 250 watt hours go? Well, that was actually used by the background power of the AC inverter. Now, these numbers aren't exact. Remember, these are rough estimates because we don't have a way to see exactly what's going on with the power station. We don't have a clamp meter on the wires coming out of the battery. So this is just a way for us to estimate these run times and power usage numbers. Now, the best way for you guys to do this is once you pick up a power station, you need to test it out. Plug it into your refrigerator, plug it into your TV, see how long of a runtime you actually get. Of course, you can estimate these runtimes using a pen and paper and some of the ways that I've showed you, but the most accurate way is to actually test it out by doing real world demos. Now, what about testing the AC70? I decided to test the AC70 with my Iceco VL60 Pro running off the AC inverter to get an idea of what type of runtime you can expect. The 12 volt fridge ran for 25 hours and 23 minutes and pulled a total of 420 watt hours. Now, obviously you get better runtimes off the DC output because it's more efficient, but I wanted to see the results of the AC inverter. When we compare this 420 watt hours versus the usable capacity of 680 watt hours, that leaves around 260 watt hours that the AC inverter used up while the DC fridge was sitting idle, not pulling power. I also wanted to test charging my laptop off the AC2A. After my laptop battery was completely full, the AC2A dropped down to 68% state of charge. During this process, the laptop pulled 40 watt hours from the AC2A. I left the laptop running for the remainder of the day, and after seven hours, it pulled a total of 130 watt hours as the power station was about to shut off. If you remember, the AC2A has a usable capacity of 180 watt hours, the laptop pulled a total of 130 watt hours, so the inverter used 50 watt hours during this test. These tests are a great reminder why it's important to always factor in the AC inverter power usage when calculating device runtimes. Now circling back to my second question, how do you choose the right size of power station? Well, now that you know the watts that your devices pull and the watt hours that they use over time, you can choose the proper size model. Now right here, we have the smallest option. This is the AC2A. This has a 200 watt inverter and it has around 204 watt hours of capacity. So this is good for charging mobile devices, tablets. You could charge a laptop a couple of times, uh, run some small LED lights, uh, run a DC fan. It's really lightweight and portable, but you're not gonna get a super long run time on larger devices, especially if you use a 200 watt device. It's gonna last uh, under an hour if you're running a 200 watt device on this. If you're looking for longer run times or more power from the inverter, you're gonna to wanna to check out the AC70. This has a thousand watt inverter and around 768 watt hours of advertised capacity. So this will run all the things that the AC2A would run, but it's gonna run them a lot longer. It also has the ability to run more things because of the larger inverter. So you can power some 
uh, portable tools on this. You could definitely run a DC fridge on this for a long period of time. This is a really good size for camping. Now, if you're looking for a home backup solution, the AC200L is a really good option as well. It has a 2,400 watt inverter and 2,048 watt hours of advertised capacity. So you're gonna get much longer run times on it. And you guys remember that we ran the full size fridge for 25 hours. The great benefit of the AC200L is the fact that it takes expansion batteries. So it's compatible with the B230s, the B300s. So you have the ability to add those on and get way longer run times with the expansion batteries. Also, that takes up to 1200 watts of solar input. So lots of really cool features on the AC200L. If you want to see the full review on that one, I'll include it down in the video description. And if you guys want to see a more detailed review of these two power stations, let me know down in the comment section. Now, Blue Eddy is having a Christmas sale right now. So if you are interested in picking up any one of these devices, you can pick them up for a discounted price. I'll include the link to that down in the video description. And I hope you guys found this video helpful or at least entertaining. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up button. And I'd recommend checking out some other content on my channel because you might find that helpful as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.